And last but not least, we've got the Roger Clark dual bearing eccentric idlers. Now, uh, the reason I'm going with these, so we're not going to use the factory idlers, we're going to use these eccentric ones because I need that adjustment. So the heads on this engine, they were decked. I know that I'm about that half tooth off with the timing marks. Um, there's nothing you can do. You, I mean, you cannot do a partial adjustment uh, on, on one of the cam pulleys themselves to correct that. That adjustment is what these, these um, eccentric idlers give you. And we like these Roger Clark dual bearing idlers because they have two bearings just like the factory ones. So these dual bearing idlers should last, again, the life of the timing components. All right, so, so here's where we're at. So we've got the crank pulley off. I mentioned that I had checked my timing and I knew that the timing was marks were a little bit off. Think things may have changed. Let me, let me uh, get you an, a close up of those timing marks. So on, on the passenger side, we're okay. On the driver's side. Yeah, it, it's kind of worse. So definitely good that we've got the eccentric pulleys to try and dial this out. So there's a lot of slack in the belt right now, but I, that's because of the idlers. The, the eccentric idlers are both, um, loose they're both loose completely right so there's a lot of extra slack in the belt at the moment there. so this is not tensioning it yet so i think the next step is to pull the pin right we're doing the initial testing of the eccentric idlers this one read the directions then read the directions then put them on then read the directions again it's a little confusing got to make sure that the eccentric idlers are in the right position you got to rotate the crank then verify that it's the correct position you also have to make sure you keep track of all your tools, which is always handy and always a challenge. Okay. So that's definitely not where we started out. Things have now moved. So now we have to unmove the things that have moved. This is the fun part. So this one's got to come slightly looser. Just only slightly though, I'd say. Yeah, and that side, that side is off. Yeah. Yeah. So we're doing the uh, passenger first, right? Passenger first, yes. Okay. Loosen so that up. Oh, you see the tension actually. Pull it off. Now it's perfect. That's interesting. It uh, just pulling the tension off. Got it exactly where it needs to be. Let's do this. Do you want me to pull something? No, I'm okay. meters exactly okay that's dead on so I'm gonna rotate the engine over again that's it that is dead on you like that now remember you're looking at the gear mark you can ignore the mark on the line on yeah. uh, the line on the belt because since we've rotated the belt over you'd have to rotate it another 700 times or so for all the marks to line up again I think it's like 3,000 <laughs> yeah exactly all right, what do we got over here? So, so here you can see. And look at the top mark. Yeah. Top mark is too far to the left, which means we need to put more tension on this one yeah. to get the belt to pull more on this side. Yeah. And that's and that's the discrepancy that we saw at the beginning that we was kind of known, and that's how the car has run for probably a good long time. And now we're finally correcting it with these eccentric idlers. Just the lower eccentric idler. Crank the engine around a few times to make sure the tension is all uniform. So this one now is pretty darn close. We can't, I don't think we can get it perfectly online because we've, we've basically maxed out this idler. This is about as far as we're comfortable going here because we don't want it to, to go pitch. We don't want to tip over exactly. Um, so that that cylinder head was very far out, um, was very far out of time, it was almost a tooth. 
almost. Yeah, when we looked yeah. at it originally. So, uh, it's way closer now. So I, you know, the, the thing we didn't discuss very much yet is what could cause this, where you need to use these eccentric idlers, but it's very likely that when these cylinder heads were machined, there was a lot taken off of the head as part of the rebuild. And in that scenario, it could be a good idea to use a, to run a thicker head gasket. Now, I don't know if you have RCM gaskets on this. This is before RCM. This is before I, RCM I, gaskets. I don't honestly remember. I think the copper can be. Yeah. So, uh, so when you're when you're doing a Subaru rebuild um, and you've cut your heads, the gaskets that will come inside of a Subaru head gasket kit or Subaru Master gasket mm -hmm. kit, those are stock size head gaskets. So they don't make up for any of the material that's been shaved off the cylinder head. Uh, if you think about it, there's two cylinder heads on a boxer motor, so double the thickness basically is being lost out of the whole engine. It means that your pulleys are all closer to the crankshaft; they're closer to the center and then the belt almost becomes a little bit too big for the engine. Uh, these, the, the, these idlers have definitely helped us dial out a lot of that extra belt distance just by, by literally cinching the belt tighter in the middle. So I'd say this is a really good result. Yeah, this is anything, anything that would change the stack height of the long block. That's where you can see these discrepancies in the timing marks, and that's where the eccentric idlers come in. So you got deck heads, um, thicker head gaskets, like if you're doing a hybrid swap with 1.5 millimeter thick head gaskets, this is what, that's what first got people kind of thinking about this. Um, if you're using a different thickness of head gasket to change compression, um, heck, if, you're, if you've got a closed deck block where they had to do closed deck inserts and then deck the block and you're using decked heads on top of that, you could need a lot of adjustment. Like we're, we're kind of at the limit. We might be able to play to get a little bit more range, but we're kind of at the limit of the adjustment with these eccentric idlers. So, like, there could be a scenario where you can just get it much closer, but you can't get it exactly precise. But, you know, for, yeah, for our results here today, we're super happy. And I bet you the car will be noticeably a little bit smoother because it's just more properly in time. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah the, this, this uh, driver's side intake cam is basically zero degrees dead nuts on. It's, yeah. it's really good. Yeah, way better.